Welcome back. I'm Brandon, the HBAR Bull. We're going to change up the format just for this week. Next week, we'll have Zepsi back for a normal show. But this week, we're actually down at Consensus. So we wanted to see if we could get a full recap, get some interviews with the participants down there. Uh, of course, none of this is going to be financial advice. Use it for entertainment or educational purposes only. Though I am down there representing the HBAR Foundation, sporting the shirt. All the opinions in these interviews are either going to be my own or those of the interviewees, not of the HBAR Foundation. With all that out of the way, let's get to it. All right, so I am here with May. She is the CEO of one of our premier wallets, Hashpack. So, May, here at Consensus, what's the overall vibe you've gotten? The overall vibe is actually really cool. I didn't expect to see so many people coming to the booth and actually knowing what Hedera was, being huge fans of it, and just being like, hey, May, you're the CEO of Hashback, aren't you? Like, I don't know, like, people seem to have a much more broader understanding of Hedera than they used to last year when I came to Consensus. And it's just like, people are really hyped up about Hedera. Yeah, well, that's certainly our goal. Another thing is, a, a lot of times at these conferences, it's more about the side events. Have you had any good experience at some of the side events we've gone to? Yeah, there was a FIS World Pay that did a thing with Hedera last night that I went to. I met so many people that were like real businesses building on Hedera or they were actually in the Web3 space and they were coming over to Hedera. I made a lot of lots of cool connections where like maybe we'll be doing things with them for Hashback. Like there's this card that is like a credit card but uh, it's like a hardware wallet called Arculus. And those guys are really cool. And like, we could probably do something with them on the payment side. And then there's like these gaming guys that I talked to. There's like this data analysis thing that is actually really cool. And they're like a week out from, from launching on Hedera too. So hopefully you'll see us put out some like content around that and help them spread the word about uh, how you can get better information about the hash graph from them. It's really cool. Absolutely. It really is great. We're getting more community members to actually work these booths and, and you've been doing a great job and I'm really happy to see that you've been making some additional connections. Yeah, it's it's been really fun. Uh, you guys are amazing too. Uh, the Twigital booth is, is so fun and like so many people are coming over and getting their like little Twigital NFTs and uh, the whole Hedera team is really fun to hang out with. I actually hang out with them last night and we were just like chilling and eating pizza. It was great. It is an absolute blast. And again, thank you so much for swinging by and telling us about it. Yeah, thank you. So we again are here at Consensus. I'm here with Patches, longtime community member, and he has a demo that he's showing off here at the Hedera booth. Patches, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes. Um, so we believe that the future of Web3 is creating Web2 experiences that allow users to gain the value without having to understand the complexity. And so the demo that we created with HGraph partnering with Hashpack is a flow that takes about a minute to complete. The user puts in their email, they put in their name, they then click a link in their email, which is a pretty Web2 experience. And when they come back to the website, we create with Hashpack a new Hashpack wallet through Magic Link, and they're now in. So now they have a, a wallet. And when we create that wallet, if you're technical, we put an automatic token association in that wallet. So that allows one NFT to be sent to them, no token association, no payment. They go through the flow and they click claim NFT. We send them their free loyalty points NFT. And the other part of this demo is we're trying to make it easy and approachable for enterprises to adopt Web3. And fungible tokens have a lot of legal unclarity uh, in, in America. So what we have done is we use Hedera Consensus Service to tether points onto either an NFT ID, an email. What's the other thing you would have? Oh, a wallet ID. <laughs> So um, one of those three things will get tethered the points. Um, so when they go to the next screen, they get their NFT, they get 500 points, and we tether it to the account ID in this demo. At that point, they have a wallet, they have an NFT, and they have loyalty points that are immutable on a mainnet that can be used to purchase things like a free coffee. And so in the demo, they click a button and we pretend that you're buying a free coffee. So you go to Starbucks or, or you know anywhere and it subtracts 400 points. It then shows that transaction on the mainnet and it gives you all of the layer, like all the three transactions. So again, more technical people, because this is a demo for consensus. The most important part is how quick it is. It takes about a minute for a user to get a new wallet, get an NFT, get points on that NFT, and then use those points. They're immutable, they're searchable, and then what HGraph has is a decentralized database solution where even if you have 10,000 records, if you have 100,000 records, you have a million records, 
we quickly index the HCS. So you have data authenticity that can go to the topic ID and the sequence number, and you can see that JSON, super nerdy. The point is that you can query HGraph with a decentralized database solution with hundreds of thousands of records and get back immediate results that you'd expect from a Web2 database experience. But there's also data authenticity where it is written onto Hedera consensus service. You can look up and confirm that that data in the database is real. And so it brings a lot. It's, the demo is doing a lot of things. And so when we're talking to people, we will expand. But the main point is, if you don't care about any of that, we can provide users value. We can provide enterprises cost savings and servers, and we can provide creators a better method of talking to their customers and exchanging value with them directly. So what are the first enterprises? What are the, your dream enterprises that you could see using something like this? Yeah, I, I just, um, you know, we have two examples in the market today of loyalty points that are working. So we have Starbucks and then we have a MasterCard that just launched two weeks ago. Um, I, think, I think major enterprises that are doing things like airline mile points, um, if, if you had airline miles tied to an NFT and then you went to an open market and sold that NFT and a percentage of that royalty went back to the airline, I mean, I'm sure there is an amount of legal work there. But major enterprises reimagining the value that they can give to users and new revenue streams they could also generate themselves through that um, enabling of their customers is our ideal. So we're doing a demo of loyalty points, but the decentralized database solution we've created at HGraph can be a gamification leaderboards. It can be event logging in Metaverse. Um, and so the use case of this technology, we think, is, is extremely vast. And again, this poignant demo was to try to demonstrate the fast consensus at consensus. But the idea and, and the objective of HGraph is to create a seamless Web2 experience that's actually Web3. Fascinating. You got to actually show this off to some big wigs yesterday, yes, right? Yes. Who'd you get to show it off to? Uh, yeah, I got to show it to Mance, who is co-CEO of Swirls Labs, and uh, he was impressed by it, which felt really great. I feel like we're going in the right direction. And if we, if we are going to get mass adoption, we must meet people where they are, meet their user expectation. And mobile users are very fickle. They will leave your website. If it takes one extra second to load, 30% will leave. And so if we're not matching that user experience in Web3, we'll never get adoption. And so and that's what we're doing. And that's what Hedera enables us to do. Couldn't agree more. Patches, thank you so much for all the work you do in your space. And, and good luck with all the things that you're trying to build. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, so here we are on the second day of Consensus before things get really crazy, and I'm here with Jesse Damro, the co-founder of Twigital. I've explained what Twigital is in the past, uh, but I want to get into his words. What does the Twigital app do? All right, the Twigital app is an iOS application that allows you to copy and paste things from the real world into immersive digital environments, basically. That's in a nutshell. All right, so the next thing I want to ask is, how's the demonstrations of actually using the app here at Consensus, how have they been going? They've been going very well. So yesterday was sort of the first day here at Consensus. We were able to get our Twigital booth here and demonstrate the process for a bunch of potential use cases. And we've been having a wonderful time doing that. It has been fun and just fun to play with and then we can use it for social media and everything else. Uh, the next thing I want to touch on is we've only gone through one day of consensus, but have you made some good connections and had some good discussions? Yeah, some amazing discussions. Uh, really happy we came down and I just want to thank Hedera and Swirls Labs for allowing us to do these demonstrations here in the booth. Big shout out to their team. and. Uh, so after the event yesterday, we were invited to go to an event over at Google's headquarters up the road here and do a little demonstration there. And we're really excited about potential partnerships there as well. Well, I'm looking forward to what happens today. Yesterday was really busy here. It was just VIPs, but we still had a lot of fun showing this off. When we have the masses here today, I think it's going to be that much better. And there's going to be a lot of light bulbs that go off for Twigital. Now, of course, this week mainly we're covering consensus, but there is all kinds of good things that are happening outside the space in government, actually. So there was a, a panel that was held by the House AG Committee entitled The Future of Digital Assets, Identifying the Regulatory Gaps in Spot Market Regulation. The chairman, a Mr. Dusty Johnson, had some nice words to say about the industry as a whole, but even Hedera specifically. So listen in. Well, we have an august panel of experts, so we best start on time. Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, to this meeting of the Subcommittee on Commodity Markets, Digital Assets, and Rural Development. It has the rather clunky abbreviation of COMDAR. 
Uh, staff were instructed to find something better, but I guess that's the best that we could do, uh, so be it. We do have a lot of uh, work to dig into this year, and I'm excited to get started. Of course, today's hearing is on digital assets, but it's hardly the only thing that we're collectively going to be working on together. I mean, clearly rural development is going to be really important, particularly in light of that title of the Farm Bill. Uh, we also have the Commodities Future uh, Trading Corporation, or Commission rather, which is going to be important, particularly given the fact that we have had uh, both the uh, chairman and the ranking member commit to doing uh, reauthorization of the CFTC this year. Uh, and I look forward to working with uh, Chair Caraveo and others on the committee uh, on that work. But today, we are tasked with examining uh, digital asset markets and I think most importantly, understanding what are the gaps in this regulatory framework and how are those gaps harming innovators and consumers alike. And, and as I mentioned, we have an august panel to help walk us through that. I, I think uh, it would be an unfortunate deficiency if we didn't take a moment to call out the nearly unprecedented level of cooperation and collaboration that we have had with the House uh, Financial Services Committee. This is a town where people very much like to fight over turf and where egos can sometimes get in the way of progress, but that group is convening at this exact same moment a complimentary hearing dealing with the same general topic. What are the gaps in the regulatory framework and how can we work together uh, to address them? And in fact, next month, the collaboration gets even closer insofar as we have a joint hearing to examine these issues together, and those are, are not typical in this town. And that cooperation is a testament uh, to the importance that both Chairman McHenry and Chairman Thompson, as well as uh, you know the teams on both sides of the aisle, have had to getting things done on digital assets this Congress. Uh, a lot of ink has been spilled on digital assets, uh, a lot of it breathlessly positive, a lot of it angrily negative. Uh, I think uh, reasonable people understand that uh, digital assets and the underlying blockchain chains can bring a tremendous amount of opportunity. There have, uh, they can also be filled with a fair amount of hype. And we know that in this marketplace, as in every marketplace, there are fraudsters and hucksters uh, that seek uh, to make money while unfortunately giving uh, the whole industry a bad name. And uh, there are uh, the hits and misses are well known to all of us. You have hits like Ethereum, Hedera, Filecoin, and then you have outfits like Banana Coin, Kodak Coin, and Mooncoin. So those are the, uh, the highs and the lows. Uh, the difficult task we're starting today, and, and we're really not starting it. I know there have been lots of informal conversations over the course of months, and even some work done in the last Congress. Uh, but the work that we uh, begin anew today is to craft a legislative framework that will allow the next Ethereum or Filecoin to emerge, while at the same time protecting the public from the hype, the scams, and the frauds that we have seen all too much of uh, in the last few years. Uh, this task is bigger than any single person, committee, or agency, and in a town that so often prefers food fights to collaboration, it's gonna take a pretty substantial collective effort uh, on our part here to make sure that we get it right. All right, so I am here with Christian. He is the CMO at Swirls Labs. What are your thoughts so far on Consensus 2023? So we're on the final day, home stretch. It's been a great event, I think. Um, I don't know if you've shown folks around, but there are so many um, exhibitors here. There's got to be, I don't know, upwards of 5,000 people here. I'm, I'm rubbish at guessing sure, sure, a lot. numbers, but there is a lot of people here. And I didn't make it last year, but I heard lots of um, good reports back. And my sense is that this year is bigger and better than ever. For us, as a layer one protocol, this is definitely the event in our industry to be at. Feels like it's a really grown up event now. It feels almost like a very traditional uh, software trade show that I've been going to sure. for you know 20 plus years which I think for our industry is a really positive sign right we're growing up we're maturing the right kind of enterprises are coming they're looking to be educated uh, we did a great party last night at FIS WorldPay which I hear was well attended and uh, everyone had a great time so yeah what about you have you had a good time here 
I've, I've had a blast. I mean, the conversations that I have about Hedera, it seems like they're, they're really meaningful. They have use cases that they want to bring to the network, so that's fun. And, of course, I've had fun showing off Twitch. So it's, yeah, it's, it's been Twitch a good time. Been great. I think uh, one, one of the things we've tried at a couple of events, and you're seeing it here and we're going to do more of it, is having community members um, show up. So Patches has been here. May has been here. Uh, King Solomon with Genfinity has been here. And I think it's so much better for our attendees to hear from people building in our ecosystem versus, you know, listening to me give the pitch all day long. Sure, absolutely. And we're ready to finish strong. 2023, uh, wow, it's, it's all about growth. You can see the growth in the number of accounts being created on the network, total number of accounts plus active number of accounts. TPS is through the roof. So I remember that it took 18 months to get our first billion transactions. 18 months from when we launched. We are now logging about a billion transactions every three weeks. That gives you a sense. There's no other layer one protocol out there that comes close. They're all legitimate transactions. There's no double counting that's going on. Uh, usage of the network is, is through the roof and it's you know indicative of the kinds of use cases that we you know the, the, the use cases that are driving that are indicative of the kinds of high volume large-scale use cases that we anticipate will will be coming to the project in the future the future council members are, are coming right 2023 I don't know what the number will be but we're able to now be more selective I think is the right way to think about it yeah there, now that we've reached critical mass, there's opportunity to be more selective in the council members that are joining us. When they join us, they have ideas in mind, if not already have projects in the works, right? So, so that's, that's sort of a defining feature anticipated in, in new council members through 2023. Now, I know that you touched base um, on kind of the, the increase in real TPS, what's actually occurring on network, which has yeah. been fascinating to see. and. I guess the question that I would have, and I always try to pull a little bit of alpha out of these conversations if I can. So I am here with Brady Gentile. He's the director of marketing at Swirls Labs. And even though we're here at Consensus, we wanted to address something that we saw on Twitter. Brandon D, a longtime community member in the space, asked, what's more important to Hedera, TPS, transactions per second, or TVL? total value locked. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, so so it, it was a great comment because I think a lot of the community talks about TPS and, and also now recently TVL with the emergence of the DeFi ecosystem. I think it's important to note that TVL is, is a really important metric, especially you know across the entirety of Web3. People use that metric to be able to assess sort of the value that exists on a chain in many cases. And, you know, we're, we're seeing progress on that front. I don't think the DeFi ecosystem has necessarily gotten its NFT ecosystem moment the way that we've seen where there was sort of a, a big push at the beginning. The community came together. We got standards. We got wallets, marketplaces, like all of that combined, which was amazing to see. And then it just kind of lifted off the ground. And now it's kind of chugging along and, you know, hope to see more of that. But the community has really embraced that. And, you know, like patches from Turtle Moon creating tools. There's a whole bunch of great stuff. When we talk about TPS, it's an interesting one because, you know, TPS as a metric alone, especially when you start to relate it across different ledgers, it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily translate between each of them. And I think the underlying thing behind TPS that might be more important to think about is the revenue that's generated from transactions. And uh, that revenue, uh, essentially the the process in very simple terms being that someone submits a transaction to the network, they're paying an HBAR, a portion of that goes to node operators that are on the network. Node operators need that to be incentivized in order to actually operate the node infrastructure. And uh, a small portion of it goes to people who are staking to nodes as well. So stakers have to receive you know, enough to feel motivated to stake their cryptocurrency to secure the network. And then you also have a portion of it that ends up going to the governing council treasury, which in itself is, is a treasury that is used 
long term for sustainable operations, things like building out the ecosystem, things like subsidizing certain independent organizations, you know, anything that's going to help boost the ecosystem. That's all very important. If you don't get enough revenue via these different types of transactions, and, it, and if you think about it, like HCS transactions, they're fractions of a penny and they're very high volume. And so you need that high volume in order for HCS to be incredibly successful from a revenue generation perspective. You could also have smart contracts where uh, they're way higher fees. Yeah, five cents or, or more, depending on the complexity of it. And, and that's gonna generate more, more transaction throughput, obviously, but revenue, mostly. So it's a makeup of all of these different types of transactions, but underlying that being sort of the incentivization model that exists. That's really important to be thinking about. I feel like the, the ecosystem, like the economy of the network is actually an incredibly important aspect of it. So if you think about sort of all of these different stakeholders that are taking place, they behave based on incentive models. And this is how any network in, you know, public network, at least in, in Web3 works. And if you don't have enough revenue that's generating in, validators won't be incentivized. Just kind of giving an example here, long term, no revenue coming in no money to subsidize uh, these stakeholders for the behavior that we want them to behave. And people start to fall off at a certain point. And so, you know, I, I could anticipate seeing a world where a number of networks, you know, they run out of cash at a certain point, don't have enough funds to continue to subsidize these various stakeholders and operations. And then we start to see kind of like a domino effect, which I think is anticipated, especially in emerging tech. But that's going to happen. There's going to be consolidation in the space, especially as regulation comes down the line, too. There's a lot of different forces that are acting, acting on that. So long story short, yes, TVL, I think, is important. But then also thinking about it in terms of revenue with regards to transactions. I actually didn't know that this is exactly how you felt because I replied to Brandon D with the yeah. exact same thing that I think that revenue is the most important thing. And I think that's how a lot of these platforms are going to be judged in the future once we get over some of these regulatory hurdles is that sustainability from a revenue standpoint. Uh, another thing that I'd like to ask you about is something that Scott Teal from DLA Piper brought up, and that's total value represented. Total value represented is pretty much when you have anything of value for their securities, um, how big is that pie? It's like TVL, but for the uh, traditional financial space. So, you know, with Aberdeen thinking about tokenizing their funds on Hedera and eventually tokenizing all their $600 billion worth of assets under management, and Larry Fink talking about how the future of the securities industry is going to be tokenization on public blockchains like Hedera. What are your thoughts on that metric going forward in the future? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I can certainly see that metric long term being incredibly important. You know, if you look at the network as a foundation on which the financial system lives on top of, which is a future state eventually, the value of that foundation, I would assume, increases based on the total amount of assets uh, and the value of those assets, rather, on top of that infrastructure. Maybe not only that, but also the facilitation of transferring those assets around as well. So sort of volume comes into play there. I want I want to know how that can be tracked in the future. Right now, TVL seems like the biggest metric. It's pretty easy to do that. You have tools like DeFi Llama who are able to sort of look at various liquidity pools and they can pull all of that data in. And then you've got oracles that do pricing. I think oracles are going to end up becoming a very important part of being able to determine the total value that exists on the chain because you need a decentralized way to assess the price of these assets. And so, you know, uh, to speak to Hedera's integrations, we are looking, and it's incredibly important to have Oracle providers on the network. It's imperative for many different types of applications in DeFi, both in Web3 as well as traditional finance that are starting to migrate over. So agreed, agreed with him on that. Yeah, uh, I'd love to, love to see that more. Absolutely. Well, we just want to take some time to address a great community question and have fun at the rest of Consensus. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. All right, so here we are on the third day of Consensus in the Hedera booth, and I've got Justin Atwell with uh, Swirls Labs. I just want to get your impressions on everything you've seen so far here at Consensus. Yeah, I think just the sheer amount of enterprise, governments, 
organizations that are interested in lots of different things is just really surprising to me. I think use cases in the sustainability sector like Pepsi, you know, with plastic tracking and yeah. wanting to mitigate microplastics and things like that are actually, it's really nice to see that they care and that they're not at a climate sponsored event, mm -hmm. which is really awesome. Um, Fidelity, uh, they have a whole room upstairs on the fourth floor, they have many employees. Um, Dow Chemical, I mean, just some of the really the largest organizations around. And I think that from a DeFi perspective and a sustainability standpoint, which is sustainability is a place to be, my friend. Sure. You know, uh, these are the places where we can make the most impact. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's make it another successful day. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, I am here with Lena. She is responsible for putting together these events for Swirls Labs. And I just was curious, what goes into having a successful event like this? There's a couple of things. One of the biggest things for us is making sure we bring the right people with us to the show, whether it's people from Hedero, Swirls Labs, HBAR Foundation, Hashgraph Association, or community builders and developers like Twigital, like Hashpack, or, you know, um, Patches from Turtle Moon. Yeah, and making sure we bring people who are one personable, super knowledgeable and friendly. And so it's easier for people to come up and want to talk to us. Well, I have had so much fun here at Consensus. This is the very end of the very last day. That's pretty much all we have. I will be back with my normal show next Friday with Rufus. So we'll see you then. Bye.